Uh, basically, the first seed testing program was organized so that it could collect enough information, much like what seed companies do to make their own decisions about experimental to commercial uh, uh, nominations. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's not to select some product that's broadly adapted to the area in which the product will be sold. In our case, while we have enough data here to make some decisions, it's also an opportunity to really start characterizing what that product can do and position it on your farm if, in fact, it belongs there. Uh, so what you're looking at here is a uh, screen of all of the regions that we have. There are 25 from South Dakota to Pennsylvania. Uh, in each case, there are about 15 to 20 counties in size, and they have, uh, for corn, six test sites, for soybeans, four. Um, the six test sites uh, make up 18 replications. Uh, for any one product that we're testing. Uh, and that's because we test each product three times at the site. And so uh, with that information, we can uh, begin to understand more about how that product will perform if, if it's hired onto your farm. Uh, what we're looking at here is a, what we call a harvest report. That's another way of saying a per site result. And in this case, it was from last year from New Richland. And uh, you'll see at the top a uh, header that uh, gives you the uh, contact information for the uh, manager if you'd like to contact him directly. And then an identifier for both the year and the region, the farmer member, and uh, the site name. Below it are several lines that are important in understanding, again, where this data is coming from. The soil types, the previous crop, the tillage, the planting date, the seeding rate, the final stand. Uh, these kinds of things are important to most growers because they want to know if that farming operation is relating, or can relate to their own uh, grain operation. To the right of that, it identifies whether it's the early or the full season test, and uh, what defines those tests depends on the regions, but basically you have, in this case, 95 to 100 day maturities. Just above the data table uh, identifies what it is that you're looking at, and in this case, it's the top 30 hybrids for a yield of 72 that were tested. Uh, each one of them, when being tested, were tested three times, and they're sorted by yield, from high yield to low yield. Uh, at the bottom of the uh, data table, you'll see a line for uh, the check hybrid, which is a hybrid that's included in both the early and the full season test, and then below it, the averages for yield, moisture, standability, stand and income as calculated by the income factors uh, in this case again below the those values. The performance summary is uh, nothing more than the compiling of data across those six sites uh, that have that same set of hybrids being tested in that particular region. And just like the uh, the harvest report we've got the header at the top uh, we identify the year of the test and where it was taken from uh, what the criteria was in selecting what we call the better hybrids, uh, which in this case is by gross income, uh, again reporting just the top 30. And uh, again, now we're looking at an average of 18 replications. And so here you have uh, an interesting uh, tool, uh, one that uh, many people see more value in than others. Uh, I would like to say that the regional summaries are very important, and the reason for that is because they represent more information, and more information is better information necessarily. I mean, that you can't get you can't, can't can't get along without it. Um, if you look then at uh, the regional summary, uh, the body of it, <clears throat> you'll see the averages once you get past the brand and the product name and the technology and the and the insecticide seed treatment. You'll see columns for yield, moisture, lodging, and gross income. Um, the top. Uh, and I'm looking at the Minnesota Southeast from 2007. The top uh, seven products are in bold. Those were boldened because every one of those were significantly above average. Uh, many farmers who use first data, and the people that I hear from most quite reasonably are our own members, uh, have accomplished some things with it. Uh, they tend to work with more seed companies, uh, three or four, maybe five or six as compared to one or two. Uh, they're buying eight, nine, maybe ten products instead of three or four. Um, they do sacrifice in terms of uh, volume discounts and they have to write more checks, but they feel like that they can do this and once they have, they feel like that they've actually got better products on the farm. I've had several times people say that uh, 
they don't have the dogs anymore. All their hybrids are working and working well. And we love to hear that. Uh, it takes some work, not just to generate the data, but to use it. But once it's used and it becomes a trusted resource for you, I'm certain it's going to pay off uh, in the end for you and for your uh, on-farm profitability.